So going into Command Con 2, there was a lot of turmoil. The community had been split for quite some time um, because of the controversy surrounding Command Con 2. And Command Con 2 is now over. And I wanted to have a little bit of reflections on not only Command Con 2 as an event, but also what went into Command Con 2, as well as my my place in Command Con and my place in the overall in the overall Dragon Ball community. And I don't just want to talk about Command Con 2, but I also want to talk about me personally. You know, usually these videos uh, about me and about like my real life, real talk kind of videos, usually they go on World of Geekdom, my second channel, and they go on there uh, under the Speakdom series that's been moved over to World of Geekdom. It used to be on this channel many years ago, now it's on World of Geekdom. Well, because this is about Dragon Ball, I'm going to put it on Geekdom 101 because it does kind of have a big role to play with Command Con 2. So, let's go back to Command Con 1. So, around the summer of 2017, I was reached out to by a guy by the name of Chris Bradley, and I spoke to a Chris Latosh, and they told me about this idea for a Dragon Ball convention, because why not? If Transformers, Power Rangers you know, Harry Potter, all these different franchises, Star Wars get their own convention, why can't Dragon Ball get one too? It's it's a huge phenomenon, and it's growing all the time, and it has a fan base, and this convention was created by fans for fans. It was not like a corporate convention put on by Funimation or Toei, it was done by the fans. And they asked me to join and help out, you know, and I became the host, and I also became the guy who organized the, the content creators. And that was my job. Those th those were my only duties for Command Con 1 and 2. And Command Con 1 was, I think, a, a real highlight for me in my career because I was able to bring content creators to the event that I thought could bring great, great ideas, thoughts, and discussions to the Dragon Ball fandom. We were able to get everybody together under one roof and have actors from various different dubs represented. And I was really, really happy with the way Command Con 1 turned out. Command Con 1 was a, a, a weekend I'll never forget and really one that I think made the community great because people can be douches on the internet, but at Command Con, nobody's mean. It's, it's like Woodstock of Dragon Ball. And that's what made Command Con 1 so great, that there were no issues. Everybody was peaceful. It was harmonic. It was, it was really a, a beautiful event and one that I will never, ever forget. Going into Command Con 2, though, I was a mess. Like, I had a lot of anxiety. I've had a very rough few months of my life. Uh, and I was worried because there was a lot of turmoil. You know, there was a civil war going on in the fandom right now. And I've tried my best to stay out of it. But some of my friends are in this civil war. I have friends on both sides. And I just hated what was going on. But I decided to stick around. Even though I was pressured to drop out of, the, of being a host from people making threats and whatnot, it actually happened. People threatened me over a lie, basically. And I decided to stay on as host because I did it for the Dragon Ball fans. I feel like I am indebted to the Dragon Ball fans because if it wasn't for the Dragon Ball fans, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And every single Dragon Ball fan that came up to me, every single person that came up to me at Command Con 1 and 2, it was easily over a thousand people. And I took pictures with them and I shook their hands. And I got to hear their story. And there were people telling me stuff like my videos helped them out with, uh, you know, drug addictions and depression. And I never intended for that. I just wanted to make videos. I never knew that these little Dragon Ball videos could actually impact lives like they did. And I, I, I'm very skeptical uh, when one person tells me that, but I've heard it from so many people, I'm just so stunned. You know what I'm saying? I, you would have never believed it, but I guess it does help. And um, it was it was such a humbling experience, which is why it's so ridiculous that anybody out there actually believes that I don't like Dragon Ball fans. Like, I love Dragon Ball fans. I mean, yeah, we fight once in a while. We always have the community debates and, and, and has scuffles, but the Dragon Ball fandom is the reason why I am where I am right now and why I'm doing what I love to do versus, you know, what I used to do, which I didn't love very much. You know what I'm saying? And that was the most important thing to me is I felt like if I did not do Command Con 2, I'd be letting down the fans. That's my opinion. Anybody who chose not to and who, who did not attend the convention for whatever reason, that's fine. That, that everybody, It's your prerogative. But for me, 
I wasn't gonna let, gonna let anybody threatening or trying to pull me to any side stop me from doing the convention. And like I said, there were threats and there were people saying that they were gonna do things and nobody did a fucking thing. There was security everywhere. People were worried about security. There was security everywhere at that event. They spent somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars on security. So uh, it was fine. It was it was a secure event. Um, but like I said, I did it for the Dragon Ball fans. That's why the event was originally even put on was for them. And that's what matters most to me is the people because we have to give back one way and having a con that has actors where you can talk to them and thank them for the performance they gave when you were a kid or a creator who you support is what this whole thing was about. And the reason why Kamea Con 2 was different than Kamea Con 1 was not because Kamea Con 1 was better or worse. Kamea Con 1 was a career highlight for me. Kamea Con 2 was a personal highlight for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I had a birthday party on Sunday with 75 people at this restaurant that we, we took half the freaking restaurant, the Korean barbecue, people that are fellow content creators, supporters, friends, um, Team 4 Star members were there, actors, Elise Bowman, Stephanie Nadolny, Brian Drummond, and Scott McNeil all came to my birthday party. Actual, like, big stars. Big, and also Kagi, Alejandro Saab, like, you know, Brian Oliveira was there. Uh, there were so many people who are who have worked on Dragon Ball, you know, the actual show that showed up to my party. And it was just, it was a beautiful thing. And it, you know, it made me feel like, I couldn't even tell you how, how I felt. I, to be a little candid with everybody, I, I've, you know, have a lot of issues and one of the issues I have is that I have a lot of self, self-hatred self and self-loathing and I know a lot of people out there also have that. Uh, it's something that I just discovered about myself last year when I went to counseling. I went to therapy, I went to counseling that I could figure out there was something wrong with me and that's when we found out that I have a lot of self-hatred. One of my exes once told me that I am not a an easy man to love because I'm very, very, I'm very hard on myself and I'm very unaccepting of love. So when people do nice things for me, when they come up to me and, and take good job on all the work, good work, and they, they put over the work I've done and when they put over what I've done to for, for them with my content, it's very hard for me to accept it. It's just something that's wrong with me that I have in my head. Like, you know, if somebody gives me a gift, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm unworthy of it. I don't deserve it. <clears throat> and that's one of my issues that I'm working on that I just... You know, people say I have a big ego. It's actually the opposite. I, it's not. It's the opposite of having a big ego. I have a hard time accepting praise. I really, really do. And it's it's a mind fuck to me that there are voice actors who listen and watch my videos. People who have worked on Dragon Ball before I was even around. It's mind boggling. I just made videos for fun. Dude, I started my channel in April, uh, March of 2015. I didn't even make a profit on this thing until the following January. So for a whole year, I made no money. I made no money doing this for a year. It was just for fun and passion and for the Dragon Ball fans. I wanted to make the community a better place. And now I have a birthday party with people celebrating me when all I wanted to do was make videos. And it's just, it's a hard thing for a man like me to understand and to accept that I got that much love. It's just mind boggling. So that was one major personal highlight for me that weekend. The other big personal highlight for me that weekend was I was able to resolve a lot of issues that I had and a lot of behind the scenes drama that I had with people at the event face to face one on one. And that's was and that was something that meant a lot to me because you know when I came into this thing, I just wanted to make videos and then, you know, there's instigation going on. There's people who are always at war. They're always fighting. You get caught up in things. You get, you know, manipulated, which I was manipulated uh, in the past. I've been manipulated a lot by people and you don't know what side to pick. You don't know what to say. You don't know who to believe. And it became one of those things where it was just, you know, it, it sucks because it's like people like that kind of stuff. But I was able to talk it out and resolve a lot of issues with people. And I'm not going to name names because... I know some of them wanted me to, but I chose not to because, number one, I don't want them to get attacked, and number two, I don't want any more instigation, but I did resolve it with people there and put a lot of things, a lot of anger that I had inside of my heart, I was able to put behind me, and it really, getting that kind of clarity and that kind of closure on a lot of things was is what made that event so great. It was just, the whole weekend was just, you know, just like with Command Con 1, there's just so much love 
being thrown around, so much passion, so much, you know, so many great times, good times and great memories by all. And I was so happy that we were able to come together and forget about the BS. You know, the internet can be a very toxic place and people are, there are genuinely bad people on the internet. There's genuinely pricks on the internet, but in real life, most people are good and most people, you know, they don't intend to do harm. You know what I'm saying? Or there's misunderstandings. But the reality is that even in Dragon Ball, which many have said is a very toxic community, it's really not that toxic as people think, especially in real life. Because there were so many amazing people saying so many amazing things, and it does make you feel good. It really does, and it was a great time. It really was a great time. A little bit stressful, of course, but it was a great time. And I hope that going forward, if you're out there listening to this and you have some kind of issue with somebody... Try to resolve it one more time. Try to let's try and make this a peaceful community again. We can have debates and we can have fights about animation and whatever, power scaling. That's all fun and dandy, but let's not let things get personal and let's just try the best that we can to um, you know, to be cool. You know what I mean? Going forward. And the best thing I can do is set an example for others to do the same. So yeah. It's a new day. Yes, it is, like the new day says. And uh, let's all ride off into the future together, united. Thank you for watching. That's all I have to say. I'll see you in the next one. I love you genuinely because if there was no you, there would be no me. And that's the truth.